What's good everybody, C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. Quick reaction here to a new signing for the Philadelphia Eagles. They finally looked at my list of targets that I think they should sign in free agency. And we signed Kaiser White. One year, up to $5 million deal. In terms of like money, very reasonable for a player of Kaiser White's skill set and for what Philadelphia needs to invest at that linebacker spot. I think a lot of people at this point, especially because we waited for so long, like you knew we're not going to get Bobby Wagner... Kind of, I don't know, it was just me. I, it kind of just feels like maybe the Philadelphia Eagles are higher on Davion Taylor than a lot of the fan base is. I was like, they're, they're going to rock and roll with Davion Taylor. And maybe we saw some flashes of Davion Taylor, but I would like someone that can for sure, you know, plug and play. And then the fact that we got Kaiser White on a one-year deal, which I think is good and or bad. I would like to see more years, personally, because I think he's a good football player. But one-year deal, then you get another year of evaluation of Davion Taylor. Because you saw, I mean, Davion Taylor is a hell of an athlete. But very much, you're training him to become a linebacker. He's almost Jordan Mailata-esque in the standpoint, like, it's going to take time, but maybe he can reach it. And if not, you know, maybe someone like Kaiser Wade Buzzle this year on the one you deal with Philadelphia, and we re-extend it. Or we look at a linebacker in the draft or something like that. But Kaiser White was a target for me, and uh, very happy with this deal. I, I think, on honestly, looking at it, I wish it was more years. I wish we, we had more guaranteed more than one year of Kaiser White. Uh, looking at the PFF rankings here for Mr. Kaiser White. He was 108. He's 26 years old. That's great age. One-year deal. He's going to be 27. I, again, I would have liked two, three years. He was the 20th ranked linebacker in PFF last year, starting outside linebacker. So for the Philadelphia Eagles, we're going to have Hassan Riddick at the Sam, TJ Edwards at the mic. And, well, you know, we might draft somebody, but I, I think we're going to go, you know, Riddick at the Sam, TJ Edwards at the mic, and you're going to have Kaiser White as the will. And Kaiser White's good, man. Like much like when I when I talked about the Son Riddick deal, like people are like, is this good? C4 is this good? Well, obviously, from a football standpoint, X's and O's tape style, it's good. But you want you want the easiest, most casual take on it's good. Look at the opposing team. I went to the Panthers subreddit, and they're all like, man, I wish we could have kept Riddick. He's good. Went to the Chargers subreddit after this, and like, we only got five million. We couldn't bring him back. So like anytime the opposing each fan base is salty that they lost a player, it should make you just generally feel good, feel happy about the move. If you're unsure how you feel about this move. Um, but I'm telling you, it's a good move. But unfortunately, and I got to take this one. Fortunately, I said last year Eric Wilson was a great move. I love that move, Eric Wilson. He didn't even make it to midseason for the Philadelphia Eagles. But there is a difference between these two players. I might as well talk about it now. The difference between these two players is when you look at Eric Wilson's situation, how does Kaiser White not become Eric Wilson 2.0? Because stylistically, they are they got attracted to the Philadelphia Eagles for the same thing. They have some range. They have coverage skills. We need cover guys because we're sick and tired. As much as I like Alex Singleton, I would have liked Alex Singleton back as a special teamer, spot starter at linebacker, fill in during the injuries. But he went to Denver. Best of luck to him in Denver. But Alex Singleton, when he was on the field, and it feels like not just Singleton, it's not that he's exclusive to him, but you look at Singleton, all the tackles, people just assume he's our best linebacker. He would get picked on in coverage. Posing offenses were like, how can we expose this matchup every single time? Kaiser White's not going to do that. He's a cover guy. Uh, and that's what we tried last year with Eric Wilson. But the problem with Eric Wilson, and we admitted that, I admitted that as soon as we signed him, is, is this guy really that good? All the production, all the tackles, the cover grades, PFF, all. Is he really that good? Or is it because he plays next to Eric Kendricks? And you equate it to math class. I hated math. I don't know about you guys. I hated math. And in math class, I would make sure that I would sit next to the nerd. And when you sit next to the nerd, you can copy off the nerd. And that's all good. You look smart. As long as you're sitting next to the nerd... You look smart because your pal cop when he does, you might not be able to show your work as much. You know, the teacher probably knows your bullshit, but they can't call you out on it. You're still getting high grades. You're getting A's. You're getting the 90s overall, like all that stuff, right? But as soon as the nerd's out sick for a test and you're there by yourself, you're like, holy shit, and you're throwing apps. You don't know what you're doing. You end up just drawing fish diagrams and stuff like that in math class. It gets bad. You fail. And that's kind of what happened, I think, with Eric Wilson. He, when he looks right next to Eric Kendricks, he was passing. He was flying colors. And then the Vikings knew something we didn't. Let him at the open market. Came into Philadelphia where their linebacking talent wasn't great. Came to Philadelphia where Eric Wilson had to be the guy of the linebacking core. Couldn't do that. I think, and this is big expectations on the plate of a guy that just got a one-year deal. But I think what we saw with Kaiser White is there's a chance that he could be the guy. And what makes you think that he could be the guy is kind of reminiscent of how the Charger fans are viewing Kaiser White leaving the building. Is 
Kaiser White, essentially, there's injuries and I think maybe a little bit of bad play, but it does seem like it was more injury-based. Kaiser White was filling in for former first-round pick Kenneth Murray last year. That's why he had this production. Um, right here. 144 tackles, his first big breakout year. Seven TFLs, a sack, two forced fumbles, three PBUs, two interceptions. He had this number. He had create solid, you know, he was a spot starter. He'd fill in here and there. But this was his year as a starter because he had to fill in for the injured Kenneth Murray. Most Charger fans, almost all that I saw, he was better than Kenneth Murray. He's an upgrade. He's a better player than Kenneth Murray. So it's kind of like if you're doubting Hassan Riddick, for an, for, for an example, if you're doubting Hassan Riddick because his big year last year with the with the Carolina Panthers, it's like, well, he, you know, Brian Burns is eating the double teams. He he you know he had he had the easier matchups. That's why his production was there. Okay, but what about his breakout year in, in Arizona before he went to the Carolina Panthers? He had to step up because Chandler Jones got hurt. He had to be the guy, and he got the job done. Not saying that he's always going to be the guy. Not saying that he should be the guy. But he has proven track record of when he was the guy that teams were trying to stop, and he still got production. He could get the job done. So. I think that's the same as Kaiser White. It's not like Kaiser White had some all-pro guy playing next to him. Kaiser White had to step in and be the guy, and he played pretty damn well. Finished there as a top-20 linebacker. It's not S2. There's a reason why it's one-year, $5 million deal, even if that is seeming a little bit cheap, seeming a little bit of a bargain. you got to have the context of the contract. If he was really like this guy that everyone thought was a budding superstar, he wouldn't be signing a one-year, $5 million deal. There's a chance, but it's unlikely. But for the Philadelphia Eagles, where we've been void of talent at linebacker, Kaiser White, he's a damn good player. He compliments TJ Edwards. And, you know, I've liked Kaiser White for a minute. My 2018 Eagles mock draft, I had Kaiser White going to Philadelphia as a safety. This was a little PFF thing that I didn't even know about. Take a look at this. Kaiser White still paces of numbers in the secondary. A big 12 who have logged at least 130 snaps in coverage. So he played a little bit of corner, but he was predominantly a safety at West And that just shows he, as a cover safety, he was, I think there's more shots at the Big 12 that year in 2018. But, like, very reputable coverage numbers for Kaiser White as a cover guy. So now that he's converted to linebacker, you need to know what you're getting. You're getting a guy that's sideline to sideline, good range, good athlete, coverage, but not, you know, S-tier coverage because, you know, there would be production. There would be more production if he was S-tier cover guy. He would have more pass breakups. Not really, not, you know, interceptions or interceptions, but I do think he'd be around the ball a little bit more if he was this great game wrecker eliminator taking out teams' tight ends and running backs. But he has that potential. He's shown flashes, and he's only 26. He's, you know, it's, it's unfair to say that he's a complete football player. Like I said, and I'm not going to have a double standard. It's also unfair to say Jalen Hurts is a complete football player, even though I think he's pretty damn close to that ceiling, which I'll maintain. That's my consistent uh, take there. But focusing on, focusing on Kaiser White, I think he's a good compliment to our linebacking core. I think it's a very low risk. I, I, there's limits to the upside of the deal because it's only a one year. If he plays really, really well, it hits free agency again next year, he might be gone. He might be using us as a stepping stone to a bigger contract. There's all that stuff that's at play. But I think ultimately it's a very good signing for at this point in free agency for Philadelphia. It makes it so you don't have to go linebacker in the first round. I don't think there's any value at linebacker. I'm going to say that right now in the first round. People want Devin Lloyd. People want N'Kobe Dean. I think if Devin Lloyd and or N'Kobe Dean had Leo Chanel's athleticism, good, uh, good linebacker there from Wisconsin, I'd take him in the first round. But in today's NFL, if you're not S-tier athlete at linebacker, you know, it, it comes down to going to the right scheme. And I, it, it's, the, the key word's value. If Philly gets N'Kobe Dean or Devin Lloyd in the first round, I'm not going to complain. Our linebackers are bad. Those guys tape. They put tremendous tape at linebacker. In terms of value, I don't think there's value in getting a linebacker this year in the first round. It's like, can N'Kobe Dean, 5'11", 220, whatever, slip like JOK did? Fell to the Browns in the second round. Can he do that and fall to the Eagles in the second round? That makes it a little more interesting. But a Kaiser White signing, at least we have a guy that we can plug and play, pencil in as a starter for the Philadelphia Eagles at linebacker. And it's just one last half twos in the 2022 NFL draft. So Kaiser White's good. That kind of just closes out. What's next? How would I grade this? I think I gave Son Riddick a B plus. We you know we brought back a bunch of other guys. I wasn't making videos bringing about Derek Barnett and uh we got uh, Anthony Harris back. I mean, these are guys that, you know, they were here. They were average. They're not bad. They're not, you know, I mean, obviously the, the penalties and stuff like that with Derek Burnett were frustrating. But Derek Burnett's still not a bad player, right? He's solid. As long as we're not a starter. If we can have Derek Burnett, if we can firmly have Derek Burnett defensive end three, 
We can clearly have Derek Burnett. Let's put him in on first down so that there is a stupid penalty. It's not like third down moving the chains type shit. I'll be fine with that. And you look at Harris back there at safety. That's fine. It's a band-aid. He can play. He wasn't a liability by any means. But I, this is really our second signing. Zach Pascal. I mean, he's a Nick Sirianni guy. Slot guy that can block. It's just it's not really worth of talking about. Hassan Riddick and Kaiser White have been our big signing so far. I gave Riddick a B+. Plus. I'll give this a B plus as well. I, I would have gave it a higher grade if we had him on longer term. I, I feel like that's the, that's the only thing I don't like about it. It's like if he balls out this year, then we're going to have to pay more next year. And that's clearly what he was banking on. Uh, but I'm happy we got him. I'm very happy we got him. And the, I think the way that we close this one out is who's next for Philadelphia. I'm going to bring up this little tweet right here. So on Twitter, we've had a little bit of uh, Darius Slay's wife is kind of recruiting, talking to Gilmore's wife, Stefan Gilmore, and they said Philadelphia, she, f I mean, if whatever, we're making a mountain out of a molehill here. Uh, they've called, so we know. So there's reports that Philly's been in contact with Stefan Gilmore. There's been nothing on the Honey Badger front. I think if Philadelphia can close with this free agency with one of Tyrant Matthew or Stefan Gilmore, I'm happy, and I mean those guys there aren't necessarily long-term plays. They're they're in third in their thirties. They're still very good players. And on this context, if you told me like pref, if I could prefer a player that I think would help the Eagles the most, it's Stephon Gilmore. Because you look at the safety market in the draft, there's going to be safeties. Really, we could pick the second best safety. Kyle Hamilton is probably not going to be there. Almost certainly, he's not going to be there unless we're aggressive in trading up. But there's going to be safeties there if, if they think Dax Hill can play. I think he's too Avante Maddox for our scheme. I feel like Dax Hill would be Avante Maddox in the Eagles defense. I don't think that's a good fit. But, um, you know, Jaquan Brisker, we had guys at his pro day at Penn State. Uh, Jalen Petrie from Baylor's very good. Seed from, from Georgia is very good. If we can get those guys in the second round, like there's going to be guys in the second round at safety that I think you could pair with Anthony Harris and, and see what happens. Like throw them to the Wolves. At corner, if we're not getting sauce, and you might even be a little worried to play Derek Stingley right away. The drop-off into that second round, the drop-off into picks 15, 16, and 19 at corner, as much as I love my guy Kyrie Elam, I think he's an absolute sleeper. Wait till I drop my corner rankings. Might surprise some people. This is just The value at safety in the later rounds for Philly in the draft is a lot more valuable than the value at corner. So if we can get Stephon Gilmore at corner and then put a safety as the guy that plays next to Harris, uh, yeah, Harris I'd probably rather that than getting... You know, whatever. Honey Badger and then having to play in Elam. Having to play, Jesus, I don't even know, Trent McDuffie or something like that outside of Darius Slay opposed to them. Even though we have options, man. There's plenty of different options for Philadelphia. I'm not going to dog McDuffie. If, if McGannon thinks McDuffie can play on the outside, he's a tremendous football player. But I just think on the context of this, on the context of Philadelphia, everyone wants a DB. If I had to pick between Gilmore and Honey Badger, even though Honey Badger, I'd probably get a Honey Badger jersey. Uh, that, I'm a big fan of him. I think Gilmore's probably the better fit, and I kind of hope we land him. I think Gilmore and Slay, those are those are the kind of moves that you make as a team that made the playoffs last year that needs to get better to make the playoffs again. It's not realistic or unrealistic that Philly can't make the playoffs. We made the playoffs last year, and we make a couple big improvements, and you have whatever hope of development for Jalen Hurts. We should... Open up next year, Philly should be in the conversation for making the playoffs in the NFC. Especially with the amount of talent that's leaving the NFC, I think most people are probably going to have the Eagles in one of those wildcard spots next season. So getting a move like Gilmore, that, that's that's like a we're going to be competitive next season type move. So I can get behind that. Love you. I want to know what you guys think, though. If you guys could pick. Salad Caps running a little dry here. Stephon Gilmore or Honey Badger, which one are you picking? I, I go Gilmore... Because I think it's more realistic that we can find a better safety in the draft than it would be getting Honey Badger and finding a better corner in the draft as it stands. But then again, we, we there's reports we're bringing Sauce Gardner in a pre-draft visit. I would 100% trade up for Sauce Gardner. He is an absolute beast. He's an absolute baller. Why not? But let me know what you guys think about it. Let me know what you guys think about the Kaiser White side. I think it's very good. I'm happy with it. It's good news for me. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go finish and record up a new Eagles franchise. If all goes well, I'll be out to you guys after supper time. Worst case scenario, it'll be out tomorrow. But I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching, and peace out.